Hi, this is Lanner Smith, and today we're going to be exploring a really interesting fragrance, brand new, just debuted last night here in San Francisco, and it is all about the DNA of the great classic aldehydic perfumes of the late 60s and early 70s. So to celebrate this, we're going to be having a wonderful French cocktail called the French 75. It's two ounces of uh, gin, a little dash of, of sugar, and a half ounce of lemon juice. And then you top it off with a bit of champagne. This was invented uh, during World War I by a group of, of French uh, captains who were in charge of the 75 millimeter guns that were aimed at the Germans. And every time, if I can get this open, every time they, there we go, every time they shot the guns, they'd make one of these first and have it. So there we have a really beautiful French cocktail called the French 75. And now let's explore this wonderful new fragrance by a great artist and perfumer, from San Francisco. Cheers! Last night I had the great pleasure of attending an art opening that was a combination of two artists. Uh, one is Claire Rojas, uh, a painter of um, beautiful modern abstracts, and uh, a really wonderful local California artist that you've all heard of before. He's the wonderful Bruno Fasolari, who is both a painter and a perfumer. And last night he debuted at the Anglim Gilbert Gallery here in San Francisco, his new perfume called Sirig. And Sirig is just an incredible piece of work. Now, the, when he smells a perfume, he sees or senses a color. And so in these paintings, you're getting these incredible colors coming out of his, his experience of perfume. And uh, there were some wonderful pieces there, including some great sculptures, three sculptures of practices that he did. One of them is the original um, uh, Chanel number no. 5 bottle, and then the other two I can't remember. One is a Caron, and the other one I can't remember what he told me it was, but they're beautiful, and you probably recognize what the third one is if you're really into uh, fragrance bottles. So um, let's take a look right now at the event, and I'll come back and tell you all about the perfume.
enjoyed that. Listen, I want to read to you a little bit about the show. That way you can really understand Bruno's intent behind it. Um, uh, Fasolari sees color in scent. For this exhibition, Fasolari will show paintings that explore his synthetic response to harvest of rose oil from France, Egypt, and Morocco. Inspired by perfumers' use of the phrase olfactory shape to describe the unique forms of a perfume composition, Fasolari's paintings create a sp space for the shapes, color, and associations of scent. Paintings play with perceptions of space and depth and recall visionary alchemical images as well as hand-woven textiles. I really got that too. There was one painting that was so incredibly um, textural and it, it looked like um, this beautiful kind of satin with a great finish and well, you it, listen, if you're in San Francisco, you got to go to the show. It runs through October 10th here at the, at the gallery on uh, number 13, Gary Boulevard. Um, the show will mark the launch of Fasolari's latest perfume, Cyrig, citing the aldehydic motifs of the late 60s and early 70s perfume. Cyrig centers on an artistic interpretation of the syringa flower, a relative of the lilac that resists olfactory extraction. Crisp aldehydes are draped over rich rose de may, ylang ylang absolutes, and a foundation of oak moss, resins, and musk. Cyrig is a bold statement scent that bridges perfumes past with the present. And boy, does it ever. This fragrance, now he talks about the late 60s through the early 70s, but I really get a feeling of even an earlier period of the early 60s. Um, the great aldehydic perfumes by Givenchy and, and Chanel are, I think, referenced here in this beautiful perfume. Many of you will know uh, of Bruno's work from his incredibly beautiful Lamp Black and Odila and Odila de Narcisse. Those are some of his early works that are just beautiful, but this one is really special. I put it on this morning at, at uh, about 6.30 in the morning, and I still have a little whiff of it still there, and it's now 6.45 in the evening here in San Francisco. So, so here I have a sample that that Bruno let me have. It's just really, uh, well, let's get into it. So I did say I, I had it on earlier this morning and I've worn it all day and it really is just so complex, so classic in its opening, in its development, in its invitation to others to smell it. I got some wonderful responses at work. People really loved it. And it, it harkens back, as I said, to uh, the glory days of the aldehydes of the late 60s and early 70s, but it is also a modern scent. It's so accessible and really just, I think Bruno has moved into a new era of his creation with this. It, well, here I'm going to spray a little so you can see my reaction again to the opening. Sublime. It is simply sublime. It speaks of something to me of the French New Wave of of films in black and white and and yet immersed in that incredible sense of style and and chic. It has a definite chic. Now he does mention that that one of the notes in it is chic. And I just think that's a wonderful little playful aspect on the whole idea of this perfume. Um, as it opens, you get this wonderful aldehydic blast that just envelops you, embraces you, and carries you into an, an area of sensuality for me. It's very sensual. And the, the May Rose, I'm not a big fan of Rose, but in this case, it works. It works beautifully on my skin. And... It's like a kiss in the morning. It really is. A, just an elegant, beautiful fragrance. Um, it is available now, and I think it, I will put a link below to Bruno's site. Um, I don't think it's up there yet, but it will be shortly. And also, you can get it uh, at Tiger Lily here in San Francisco, and I believe he's also carried by um, Lucky Scent. So, 
definitely. If you can, if you like great perfumes by modern perfumers that carry a sense of of history and drama in them, I would definitely check out Syrig by Bruno Fasolari. So this is Lanner Smith from Saint Mary saying, "Remember, where would you love, and not where they say you should like." Cheers.